Did they really crash his horses together? Wait, was that a real horse crash? Okay, how the hell, okay, how do they do it? All right, all right, I'm done. How do they do it? Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Visual Effects Artists React. I have a spooky, spooky CG clip that these guys have not seen before. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh yeah, that's creepy. What is that? And if you're a child, please leave the room right now because this clip I brought is for adults only. Wait, no it's not. <laughs> it's not for adults at all. Well, the rest of the movie is for adults. Yeah, it's poor things. Whoa, wow. dude. Oh, interesting. Do you know what I just noticed? Unrealistic inertia. This is totally for all audiences. So, <laughs> your kids can watch so, this so episode. Wait, 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 okay, wait, wait, you're right. Okay, so kids, watch the clips from the movie I'm about to show you, but don't watch the rest of the movie, okay? All right, so we're out here. Uh, I've been walking for like 30 minutes now. Uh, got off the trail a little while ago. And what in God's name is this? Man, it makes me want to go out in the woods. Finally, here we are. Oh boy. <laughs> CG hole. Whoa. Is that CG? Oh yeah. Hey, is oh, this the back room? Is this a liminal space? Oh man, the only thing giving it away is like the very distant part of that hallway. Every now and then if you look at the highlights, there's like a little bit of that flickering going on from like the sample rate type flickering. I'm also detecting a little bit of that like blender denoising. Like I get it, I get it, I get this piece. It's a liminal space video. You know, this is a very well established genre at this point. But this one in particular I like because... Ho, oh, oh. ho! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, yeah, that's creepy. What is that? That gave me a jolt. That gave me a serious it, jolt. Yeah, me too. I, yeah. I jumped. Part of it was you screaming right next to me. <laughs> <laughs> but this really captures like the true reality, like creepy liminal space vibe, which is, ugh. You're doing the same. Ugh. <laughs> also, that's an incredibly good model of like a mall. Yeah, like it is stunningly accurate. So this is actually part of a 45 minute long film made by Kane Pixels, the guy who made Backrooms. One thing that really stood out to me, one of the reasons this looks so good is the camera work. It's this handheld, real feeling, like it's not animated, it's being captured from real handheld footage, motion tracked camera work. When it goes up to the gate and looks through, they're like the zoom with the shake, plus the artifacting yeah. from the compression and the noise. Like that blocky shadowness. It sells it so well. So good. And also the timing of the oh, auto so exposure. Is, and also that milky blue and the, it's like, I'm yeah. just, the noise there's pattern. so many real world elements that are working its way into the shot that make you instantly believe it's real footage. Do that gate right there, that carpet. I know. Oh my God, It's so come tasty, on. these renders. Dude. This, this man is able to make renders that are so tasty, he can sit on them for 45 minutes. He's like the, <laughs> he renders the most boring stuff in the most excellent way. <laughs> There's one enemy that Kane had to fight in this, which is when you have a shiny, hot, white pixel, and it's really far in the distance, yep. sometimes when your computer is rendering it, it doesn't know which pixel of your screen it should put that little hot pixel on. Maybe it's over here, maybe it's over here, because it's right between them, and it's really far in the distance. And it starts going and you'll notice sometimes, really far in the distance, these little hot white pixels will turn on and off and on and off, or these like lines will, especially when it's like really dark. Yeah, well it's, it's aliasing basically. It's aliasing, it's, it's because your computer has to sample the space into discrete gridded out pixels on your screen, and sometimes that little pixel in the distance gets caught and displayed, and sometimes it doesn't. I'm just blown away with like the commitment to real world architecture, because when you're in the CGI space, you can do anything you want. And with those previous Backrooms videos, he does that. It's the, their giant imaginary spaces that have realistic texture and shape, but are unrealistic in their proportion. Whereas this, I'm just like, bro made a mall. So Kane Pixels based this entire mall on a real mall, the Valley View Mall in Dallas. Wait, so this is based on a real location? Yeah, which was defunct and going out of business and it was torn down a year ago. So he got blueprints and floor plans and that kind of stuff and I think he just modeled the entire thing based off of looking at videos. And in this mall, they house these paper mache like parade giants. So this is- Oh my God. <laughs> there it is. This is so creepy already. Isn't it eerie? And it's this is so like the creepy. real- This is this the is real, real thing. <laughs> yeah, no, okay, that's a great reference. <laughs> he just nailed this genre. He basically like defined it and then came back and just did it again. And I'm just so impressed. Bravo, Kane Pixels. You just killed it, man. This is awesome. I wish you go check it out. We'll have a link in the description. Yeah, just, that's, that's really yeah. well done. Just look it up. That's so much work. Hey, since we're talking about scary things, 
Give me some comments for movies from like the 80s and 90s that have really crazy like creature design, like latex creature, Cronenbergian style creature monster stuff. I want to find some cool stuff to show these guys. Hey guys, uh, Jordan here. I've, uh, I've been stuck in the quarter back room for quite a while now. I kind of feel like I've just been on a loop. Have you ever been stuck like that? You know, just going in circles, feeling like you're making no progress at all? Because today's sponsor, Copilot, it's like the ultimate fitness guide that takes monotony and turns it into motivation. Oh God, oh I think I see an exit. It's the end of the loop. I know it. Darn it, another lap. It's okay though, because you can message your personal trainer, like I did, and they can tailor any workout for whatever your situation is. Right now, I've asked her for more cardio workouts because I have to keep trying to outrun uh, this guy. <sighs> That's a creeper. It's okay, but there's more than just cardio. You can do Pilates, bodybuilding, yoga. <gasps> okay, time for more cardio. Let's go. Luckily, I've been pilot for two years now, and my trainer has been the best. She's always held me accountable, and she's always had my back, my back, back. But if you're finding that the trainer that you have isn't the right fit, you can always get a new one. Ah! Speaking of new, I've never seen that guy before. All right, I can tell I'm not making it to the gym anytime soon. Ah, but it's okay because with Copilot's flexibility, you can work out whenever and wherever you want to. Ah! If you never want to have to plan another workout again, then click the link in the description below or sign that QR code to get 14 days free with your own expert personal trainer! Should have stayed away. You should have killed me. I will. Ben Hur. Ben Hur. Ben Hur. Morgan Freeman. Remember when he did that episode with David Goyer and Chris McLean, kind of focused on the foundation? Yeah, yeah, I remember that. So Chris McLean is a visual effects supervisor, and he was also a visual effects supervisor on 2016's Ben-Hur, which kind of went under the radar, no one really saw it. I'll be honest, I had no idea this movie existed. I'll I'm be sorry. honest, I didn't either. But I was doing some research when they were coming in, and I was actually kind of surprised. Is that Ben? Yep. Benjamin Hur. Oh boy, the GoPro angle. 2016 GoPro, that's, oh. Obviously a pretty tricky thing to film. <laughs> a chariot race. I kill you on the next one! Cool. There's a lot of shots in here that are awfully convincing. <laughs> this is all very convincing. It's only when it goes to the super wide shots that I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah, you get like the fuzzy drop shadow effect here and there, but <laughs> like all these tights like that, like, okay, okay. What is real and what's not? That's what I'm trying to constantly gauge here. Like that shot sick. Wow. <laughs> yeah, holy cow. <laughs> There's some really cool oh! stuff in here. This is pretty solid. It's not suffering from the digital double like wacky physics thing. Yeah, the actual like the crashes are really like one of them satisfying. Kind of one of them, yeah. But I'm just saying like you normally you see the digital double go like, whoo, don't animate beat, <laughs> you know, <laughs> curves flying, you know, like <laughs> these crashes are pretty well animated. I'm I'm very impressed. Did they like crash his horses together? Wait, was that a real horse crash? <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it. Cause it's like, surely not, right? Surely, and yet it looks so real. Okay, how the hell, okay, how do they do it? <laughs> all right, all right, I'm done. How do they do it? <laughs> Are these guys running around with horses? The horses look like they're really pulling the carts, but obviously it would be inconceivable to trust an actor <laughs> with that many horses. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing that Chris mentioned to me that really stood out to me is they went into ZBrush and they sculpted muscles onto their CG horses for when they were flexing, and they used those as blend shapes. So like they not only did oh, muscle simulation whoa. under the skin of the horses, because you know it's one thing to do human ragdolls, but they have horses crashing. So horses are doing moves that you can't motion capture, you can't really simulate. So animators and sculptors are going in and making the most photoreal horses. How are they doing the horses for the rest of it? There's all these like medium shots. They're whipping the reins, they're riding these little chariots. Because it's like, surely a lot of that was actually real. It looks very real, like all the GoPro angles, but the moment you start putting the horses in danger, it becomes a situation where you cannot do that for real 
because you cannot endanger animals. That's the law. In filmmaking, it is a lot in filmmaking. They are doing real horse chariots. Uh, they're doing real chariot racing. There's a lot of real stunt work happening, and there's just some really, really good CGI happening. Dude, look at well. that rig. Dude, the belly rig. Yeah, the way the skin like bounces when like the horse moves, and they can change the amount, so you get different amounts of like ripples and bounce. That looks so good. I love how they're doing test shots here, where they just put the fake horses right next to the real horses until it matches. Yeah. It's great. I mean, that's the way to do it, right? Yeah. What I'm seeing is this CGI and all the VFX artists, they are matching the amount of effort that happened on set. That's why this is working so well for me, is because it was clearly an absolute pain in the butt to shoot this. This movie basically kind of just came and went. Like, it really flew under the radar, but like, this scene is so well made. I just, I feel like the world needed to see it. Yeah. I feel like we need to see some of these crazy stunts and crashes and the work that went into it. Beautiful artistry. Bravo. Yep, good job, guys. Killed it. Bella, this is Mr. McCandles. Hello, Bella. So have you guys seen Poor Things? I've heard it was good, but I have I not, have seen, not it. seen it. It is a very raunchy film, so, you know, be warned. But that being said, it is also really, really good. And in, in a weird way, like, I kind of describe this movie as like a what if Wes Anderson movies were, like, more engaging. Stop! Run! Yo, this shot is already surreal. It's like the super wide field of view with the straight angles. There's, like, no barrel distortion. Whoa. Look at this freaking chicken goat and, and dog chicken. Or duck goat. It's it's a dope and a, a dickin. <laughs> dickin. <laughs> and, uh, a dope and, and, and the a other dickin. one's just a doat. A doat. <laughs> or a chog. <laughs> yeah, I, I Can like I pet that, that chog? <laughs> Don't Can I pet that, that chog? <laughs> chog and a guck. <laughs> a guck? Yeah. A guck? <laughs> a guck and a chog. Yeah, a guck and a chog. There we go. <laughs> it looks... Almost like it's kind of practical. Yeah, I feel like they had a real goat and a real chicken on set and they just did head swaps later. Yeah, but I don't think the heads that they swapped onto them are CG heads. No, they're probably I think real. they look like real practical footage that were composited in. You guys are 100% right. Yeah. Yeah, so like in this shot, she's actually just giving a treat to a dog. Totally separate, not what we're seeing here. And then afterwards, they basically bring in a variety of different animals to generally recreate the same motions and basically they're splicing them all together. Whoa, wow. dude. Oh, interesting, interesting. Do you know what I just noticed? Unrealistic inertia. So the pig's head is tracked onto the chicken there and the chicken has a very, very lightweight upper torso and head. The chicken's moving really rapidly there and the pig's head has a lot of weight to it and yet it's also moving rapidly with the chicken. The integration of it is really good. Notice how the skin of the pig just ghosts everywhere. Are we haunted? Is it haunted in here? Yeah. <laughs> we watch one creepy video. <laughs> <laughs> There's no one else in here that we know of. Yeah. My wrist. Yo, what are you doing? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to make any noise. I'm, I'm just trying to sneak a couple of these new tees home. There are new limited edition bonsai design shirts. They come in sweaters, too. If you want to get your hands on these last few remaining, you can head on over to corridordigital.com slash store to get your own, but they're only available until April 30th, so... And hey, for those of you in abject poverty like me, you can sign up, corridordigital.com, and you'll get 15% off your shirts or hoodies. Get yours now. All right. So, more uh, so yeah, you're okay, the chig. So it's still really well integrated. Notice how the skin of the pig is like deforming with how the chicken's moving. And it's motion tracked really well to the chicken's motion. And the fact that the pig is eating helps with like the tiny little jiggles. But yeah, the whole, the whole head moving up and down without any sort of like droop from the weight. Cause it's like, at the end of the day, obviously this is an impossible creature. Right. There's gonna be some liberties that have to be taken if you want this to be a thing in the movie. Honestly, of all of them, this is the one where I'm like, eh. Probably should have gone for the, you know, uh, Dickin. She, she gathers 15 words a day. Her coordination is unstable. Every shot has been a very different 
lens. The cinematography then, in this like, is like this shot here. Notice how the angles of everything are straight. The edges of the walls and the stairs, the flooring, it's all straight. There's no barrel distortion. And then it immediately cuts to these other shots where it's like there's this weird sort of circular bokeh to it all. And then it actually cuts to a shot with a bunch of barrel distortion. They're using a lot of these weird lenses with a lot of crazy distortion. As far as like linking your lens choice to like a cinematography slash like filmmaking tone for your scene, it's it's really, really good. Now, that can make the effects really hard when you have lenses oh, with yeah. lots of aberrations, artifacts, things like that. And, well, they just lean into it really hard. Check this out. Oh. Barrel distortion again. Wow. Oh. This is so wild, what the heck? Yeah, right? What an interesting visual style. It's like trying to come up with like a new sound when you write a song these days. Like, how do you come up with a new visual style? <laughs> but like, I love the commitment to combining all these weird different lenses in this sequence here and having to do VFX on all of them. Where are the effects we're seeing? So all these shots are 50-50. It's 50% set, 50% VFX. Wow, okay, sure. So every, every shot you're looking at here, like even the one with the little trams and stuff going overhead. So like like there, CG set a, extensions. Like I'm at just basically draw a line halfway through the shot and then everything below it is part of their set and everything above it is CGI. Yeah. Which is a pretty standard thing to do these days, but like what you're pointing out, Sam, is that they're still having to filter that through the style of each individual lens. Yeah. Exactly. And like so here it's like a little bit more straightforward. You know, you motion track your shot, you add your VFX in there. But then we get to that other shot that we were looking at, which is the same set in the same environment but now with the extreme barrel distortions. So for the barrel distortion shots, the answer is simple. You basically undistort the footage. So you end up with like this weird sort of pincushion type thing. You can do all your compositing and effects. And once that's all done, then you re-add that sort of barrel distortion to it. And then everything deforms uniformly. Yeah, super cool stuff. It's a cool film, really intense. Everything after this is mostly nudity. Uh, but there all are still cool VFX and sets and locations mixed with the nudity. None of our lives can matter more than this mission. Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning. So yeah, ILM did a bunch of visual effects on the newest Mission Impossible movie. This looks, well, it's ILM, I guess. <laughs> I was about to say it looks good, and I was like, duh. <laughs> 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 Duh. It's, like, it's the thing you don't need to really say when you watch this stuff. So what I find nuts about this sequence here is that they actually threw a train off of a bridge. Did they really? Take a look. Oh Whoa! Lord. That's crazy. Holy cow. Man. That's a really nice CG environment. And a CG train. The entire train was replaced. Oh man, that's a little it's sad. But they kept the crash of the train, which I thought was very smart because they specifically left in the real composited footage over the gray render background. So you're like, oh yeah, those splashes, the train hitting the ground, that was real. I mean, you do get perfect animation when you film something for real. There is something kind of visceral about that real footage that I'm a little sad to lose, but it's pretty cool to jump the train into a mine pit. <laughs> At least you get the behind the scenes footage, right? At least you get the actual like, yeah. un-CGI'd version right here. Like Tom Cruise, as much as I love him as an actor, he keeps trying to market his projects based on we did it all for real, we got it all on camera. And then it's like, oh yeah, ILM's like, oh yeah, by the way, like everything you saw was fake, we did it. <laughs> it's actually pretty sick, check it out. They have gone out of their way to create these real sets that move and transform like this. So at the end here, when Tom Cruise actually grabs that, he's literally hanging, even though at the beginning of the shot, he's walking. And again, it all gets replaced in CG because it, at this point, it, they can make it look as good as the real thing in CG. But the thing that they're keeping that is real are the actors. When it comes to doing stuff like this for real, I don't think it's about the footage being, hey, my final movie shot is all real. I think it's more about the idea of this actor playing this character is having some truthfulness to the stuff they're doing. You know, it's like Jackie Chan doing his stunts, right? It's like if you have an actor playing a badass, but they refuse to throw a punch in a fight scene, it, it feels like, why, are you, why is that actor playing this character? It doesn't feel authentic. And yeah. The actor is 
Seagal. <laughs> yeah. So there's something authentic about if Tom Cruise is playing, you know, Ethan Hunt, this agent, and Tom Cruise himself is getting out there and doing dirt bike jumps and doing skydiving and, you know, doing helicopter tricks. It makes it feel like this is a person that's okay to see portraying this other person. I can buy it. I can yeah. get into it. Yeah. Which at this point is more than half of the story of Mission Impossible is the fact that Tom Cruise is doing all this stuff. Yeah, I mean, if art is a lie, you know, it's like a couple truths here and there really sell the lie. That's a kind of cynical way of looking at it, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you in the next episode.